Hi everybody, how are you doing today? Well, we're going to have another vidcast today, and uh, for our viewer question, uh, I've got a question from James. He has a fiance here in the Philippines, and he wants her to travel to the United States to come and visit him. And we'll be talking about that a little bit later. It's a question that I get a lot. Um, a lot of people uh, ask this, and they want to know if their fiance can just come over so they can get to know each other or just to make a visit or whatever. And um, we'll talk about that. Uh, you might, some people might be kind of surprised with my answer. Okay, but, you know, I want to give you a little bit of an update about my wife and my kids uh, here in the Philippines or wherever they are. Uh, anybody who follows along with me will probably know that uh, back in, well, let's start out with Aaron, my second uh, oldest son. Aaron went to the United States in October of 2016. And uh, his plan was he was going to go there and work and kind of get his life kicked off. You know, he was uh, 19 years old, or no, he had just turned 20 at the time that he left. And he wanted to go over there and get a job. And uh, he really had plans to stay there uh, on a full-time basis and live there. Uh, that I had already had a heart attack uh, at the time that he left, but I had not yet had uh, my bypass surgery, which I had in November. I really didn't even know for sure that I was going to need a bypass at that time. Uh, so he went on ahead and went. That was okay with me, and he was thinking of coming back for my surgery, and I told him uh, I thought it was better if he just stayed in the United States and got his life going. I felt like I was going to be just fine, and uh, that's how it turned out. i turned out I'm very good. Uh, my heart's good. Everything's good with my health. I'm moving forward. And so uh, Aaron did go on and get a job. Uh, he got a job up in Alaska doing some work in a fish cannery up there. And uh, Fema, my wife, and uh, my, sec my youngest son, Jared, also went to the United States. They went in May of this year, 2017. Uh, they first went for about a month. They stayed uh, in Vancouver, Washington, where some of my family lives. And uh, then uh, toward uh, a few weeks later, Jared went down and stayed with some friends in Memphis, Tennessee, or near Memphis. And he was there for about a month. And FEMA uh, also went up to Alaska where Aaron ha had a job and she was working uh, at a place called Red Salmon Cam Cannery in a small town called Knockneck, Alaska, which is on Bristol Bay. So uh, the salmon season finished up uh, around the end of July. So FEMA had about a month's work and then uh, FEMA and Aaron went back uh, to Vancouver, Washington, and uh, Aaron was having some trouble with uh, some of his teeth. He needed to have some work done on his teeth, and uh, I think we all know that dentistry is very expensive in the United States, so Aaron decided to come back to the Philippines and have his teeth worked on, and he, he's here now. Uh, Jared and Aaron came back here a little over a week ago, and They'll both be staying until around next May or June when both of them will be going back and working in Alaska. Probably this time they'll be in Alaska through about November of 2018. And uh, they'll make some really good money the, up there. Uh, the pay is good mostly because there's a lot of hours. You can work uh, even up to 110 hours or so per week. And you get into that time and a half, and uh, you make some really nice money. So uh, that's what's going on with Aaron and Jared. They're back in the Philippines now. They are uh, doing some work for me, especially, well, Aaron is working here on the Live in the Philippines web magazine. He'll be writing at least one article every week, and he'll be doing some video production for me and that kind of thing. And uh, he seems happy to be back. It's nice to see Aaron again. He was gone for nearly a year, and uh, that's the longest he's ever been away from home. He was gone for about seven months in 2015, uh, also in the United States. 
Jared, uh, when he went to the U.S. this year, that was his first time to be away from home. He was up there only for about two months, but uh, that was good. He was ready to come back, and I could tell that he had matured a lot when he came back. So it was really nice. Jared's also going to be doing work for me. He's already doing work. On my other health website, uh, 430tofit.com, uh, Jared's also going to be writing on there and doing some other work as well as video editing and this kind of thing on there. So that's an update on my two, uh, my younger two sons. Our oldest uh, boy, Chris, is still here in Davao City. And uh, Fema is still in the United States. She got another job in Alaska, and she's now in King Cove, Alaska, which is in the Aleutian Islands. And she's going to be there until uh, sometime in November. So she's got a few more months there, and then I'm um, looking forward to seeing her back again here in Davao City. Uh, one of my blog readers, Jeff, uh, is on the management team there in King Cove, where Fame is working. And uh, he was very helpful in uh, getting the employment for FEMA. And uh, hopefully Jared and Aaron will also be going to King Cove next year, as well as Nucknick, where they were this year, except for Jared. He was too young. They only hire you if you're over 18, and Jared's only 17 right now. But he'll be 18 by next uh, fishing season up there. Okay, so as I said, I have a question today. It's from James about his fiance wanting to travel to the United States and James wants James wants her to come and uh, pay a visit there so let's hear what James has to say do you have a special person in the Philippines that you'd like to send a gift to maybe some flowers chocolates or some other type of gift perhaps a teddy bear go to www.wowphilippines.com that's w o w philippines.com we can take care of you and send a perfect gift for any occasion we've been in business for nearly 17 years now come and visit today wowphilippines.com yes hi um i have a question regarding my fiance's ability to travel from the philippines to the united states you know, currently she's working on a number of issues. Apparently there's some problems with her middle name and she's in the process of resolving that. And then of course she'll have to get her identification papers straightened out and, and we're in the process of doing that. But anyway, the, in the long run, the question is once all that's resolved, if she want to travel here to be with me for two months it's my understanding that if she has a passport she can travel directly to the united states from the philippines just on the passport for a total of 60 days does she have to have other qualifiers does she need to have uh, money in the bank are there or does she need a letter from me? Are there other qualifiers she might need in order to make that possible for her to travel from the Philippines to the United States to visit with me uh, for 60 days? Thank you. Hi, James. How are you doing today? I'm sorry to tell you, but I don't really have good news about your question. I understand that uh, you're engaged to somebody and you want her or she wants, I think both of you want, for her to come to the United States and pay you a visit for uh, a couple months or whatever. I, I think you said a couple months. Uh, unfortunately, I'm sorry, James, that's really not going to work out. Um, Firstly, the odds of her getting a visa, like a tourist visa, to come and visit the United States are almost zero. Um, for just any average Filipina, especially a girl of marriage age, the odds of getting a visa are close to zero. Uh, now, if she was very wealthy and had a job that sent her or something like that, then uh, it's possible. It's possible she could get a visa. Not probable, but possible. Uh, some of the things that the embassy worries about uh, are things like 
the Filipino person becoming an illegal alien, not returning to the Philippines. Maybe they're going to do illegal work in the United States, uh, which you cannot legally work at all on a tourist visa. So these are all things that have hindered the United States from giving tourist visas easily to Filipinos. A lot of Filipinos become illegal aliens, they overstay their visas, they work illegally, that kind of thing, and because of that, it's very hard for Filipinos to get such visas. Okay, you had asked, can she just travel with just her passport? Now, unfortunately, Americans like you and I, we can travel to the Philippines with nothing but our passport. But Filipinos must have a visa to go to the United States. They cannot travel with just a passport. It's not allowed. They won't even be allowed to get on the plane if they don't have a visa from the embassy. So the answer to your question is no. She cannot travel there with nothing but a passport. You also asked about a letter from you. I'm sorry, but that is of no value. The embassy will not uh, issue her a visa based on a letter from an American citizen. It's just not going to happen. Okay, so as I said, uh, the U.S. Embassy is very reluctant to approve Filipinos for visas because of the poor track record of Filipinos overstaying and, and becoming Ill illegal aliens there. So uh, especially, like I said, somebody of marriage age because the embassy is going to figure that, hey, here's a 23-year-old girl or whatever, um, She's probably just going to go over there and find somebody to marry so she can stay. And because of that, it's very unlikely that they're going to give a passport to a, a girl of the proper age for marriage. Um, you mentioned that she's your fiancé. The very fact that she's your fiancé is going to make it pretty much impossible to her to get a tourist visa because once she's engaged to you, the proper way for her to go to the United States is with a fiancé visa. You'll need to file for her to have a fiancé visa, but the catch on that, I don't know if you've met her before, you must have met and be able to prove that you've met in person before, before she can get a fiancé visa. Okay, so um, if she's going there with any thoughts of getting married, now the fact that she, you're, she's your fiancé makes it, obvious that there's thoughts of marriage even if it's in the future here in the Philippines that's going to make it pretty much impossible but if you were not engaged and she was going to go there and she had any thoughts that she might marry somebody she's not eligible for a tourist visa because it's not legal for her to go there with intentions or even thoughts of marriage and do it on a tourist visa so that's another strike against you there now, I'm going to also tell you it's a very common scam. I don't know how much or how long of a relationship you've had with this girl, but it's a very common scam that these girls know that they cannot get a visa. So what they'll do is they'll become friendly with you. You'll do uh, chat online, maybe webcam, this kind of thing. Maybe they're even doing things that... Uh, some people might consider inappropriate on the webcam. I don't know. But they'll do this kind of thing in an effort for you to want them to come to the United States to visit you. They know they can't get a visa. They already know how the rules are. But what they'll do is they'll say, well, James, you know, I want to come and visit you, but I need $5,000 for my airplane ticket. So you send them $5,000. Then they're going to say, well, James, I went to the embassy. They won't give me a visa, but if you put 10000 in my bank account so that I'll have some money to show that I have a reason to come back to the Philippines, then they're going to give me a visa. Well, I'm sorry, but that's not going to work. The embassy knows these scams, and they can tell that $10,000 was just deposited into the bank account two weeks ago or whatever. They know it's a scam. So then if the girl gets the $10,000, you can be sure she's never going to return that to you, even though no matter what she told you, that money's not coming back, I promise. Okay, then she's going to say, oh, I got the visa. And by the way, I need another $4,000 for my travel money. It's expensive to travel. I need that $4,000. Whoops, I have to buy luggage. I need another $1,000. they are just going to keep milking you on that money until you just say no more. 
Once you say no more, you'll never hear from them again. They'll keep your money, they'll keep everything you've sent them, and they'll move on to somebody else. As a matter of fact, they might be doing this with three or four other people while they're talking to you and promising these things to you. This is very common. I hear this uh, probably at least a few times a month from people that say, I've got this girl, I've never met her before, but I've already sent her $7,000 to cover her airplane ticket and her visa costs, the travel and everything. Well, buddy, sorry, kiss that 7000 goodbye because you're never going to see it again. So, James, like I say, you didn't give me enough information to know what kind of relationship you guys have. Maybe it's all legitimate. Maybe you've known each other for 15 years. But uh, most likely, based on what other people tell me, I, I don't expect that's the case with you. So, uh, you know, be cautious. Don't be gullible. Don't give out money to people that you don't know. And don't believe everything that people tell you on the web. That's the best advice I can give you, my friend. So anyway, I hope that works out for you. I wish you the best of luck. And uh, watch out for your money because there's always somebody out to get it. I promise you that. Take care, James. And okay, for everybody else, that will wrap up today's edition of the vidcast of the Expat Answer Man. Hope you enjoyed the show. And uh, I'd like to invite you to come and visit my website, www.liveinthephilippines.com. That's liveinthephilippines.com. Come by and visit. We have articles, videos, or whatever every day, uh, every weekday. We usually don't publish on the weekends, but occasionally we do. So come by and visit. Looking forward to seeing you there. Take care.